Hello again, hope everyone's doing well. Sorry about the break in videos. I know it's been, been about two, three weeks, but I've just been really busy with work. But although I've been busy with work and not making videos, I've still been making some purchases, both higher end and lower end as well. And today's video is gonna be about one of those lower end purchases. And although it was lower end, it was actually very high quantity. So it was a large purchase for me. I've never bought this many cards at once. I think it was about 3,000 cards all up, which is crazy, but I bought all those 3,000 cards just to get 18 of them. I only wanted 18, but they came as a bundle deal, so I said, you know what, stuff it, I'll just buy the whole thing. And the card I was looking at is this Gary Ablett base card from 2003 XL. So this is very much in the same vein as the Dustin Martin rookie experiment, exactly the same really, that I bought a bunch of these cards, which I think are undervalued. I'm gonna send them into CGA for grading uh, and get them back and, and try and keep a couple of the, of the tens and then flip the rest for a bit of a profit, hopefully. So why am I targeting this card? Well, this to me is unarguably his rookie card. So this is in 2003 XL, like I've said. His uh, first year of playing in the AFL was 2002. He was drafted in 2001. Um, so, this is his first card in the in a select set. He also has a, a Scanlon's Retro from 2003, which is worth a lot more just because it's rarer. Uh, but I think this is his standardized rookie card in the AFL. Not only is it his very first card with select, he also didn't have a card in 2004. So some players, they might have a base card in their, in their rookie year and that's technically their rookie card, but then they have a future star card or a, a rising star card in the next year, which although that's not their true rookie, it becomes a bit more of a placeholder. So I went into it briefly before, but why did I buy this card? And I think at this point, it's really important to say that this won't work with every card. I know it might seem like I'm just picking random base cards and then grading them and, and trying to see a profit with that, but that's not really how it works. It's, there's only really two camps, two situations where this is gonna work. Number one, a player has so much demand that it goes past their designated select rookie cards. And this is really limited to Dustin Martin, to be honest. There's no other player in the game who has designated rookie cards, whether it be a draft pick signature, whether it be a, a rookie parallel, something like that, who ha whose base card is valuable as well. And that's because no other player has the same amount of demand as Dustin Martin. So for example, for me, the second most collectible player of the 2010s is Paddy Dangerfield. I know he's pretty unliked at the moment. He's, he's kind of fallen off a bit, but definitely people forget he was an absolute force of the AFL from 2012 to 2020. So although he's the second most collectible player of the 2010s, you look at his card prices and you've got his platinum draft pick signature, which is about $300. His gold draft pick signature at about $100 or $80 even. And then you've got his... Uh, he got his Champions Rookie Parallel, which just sold online for $16. And I've also got a copy I bought this year for $16 as well. So it goes for about $20 to $30 reasonably. Now compare this to Dustin Martin. Dustin Martin's draft pick signature goes for about 1000 His draft pick Platinum goes for about 500 And his Champions Parallel goes for about $150. So you can really see the disparity. Dangerfield's um, same exact card being the champion's rookie, which has the same print run as Dustin Martin, goes for about 10 times less. And and that's what I don't think people understand, how far ahead Dusty is of other people in his generation. Now, there are younger players such as Sam Walsh who are catching up a bit recently, but in, in the 2010s, Dusty is just unmatched. So that's this first situation where I think grading base cards will work because in my eyes, you can't have a draft pick signature at a thousand and a champion rookie at one fifty, and then the base card be worth one dollar. Like it just doesn't make sense to me because, although the base card isn't as rare in pristine condition, it's about as rare as the champion's rookie in my mind. So that doesn't make mean it's going to be exactly the same price as the champion's rookie, but it's going to be around there because that's just the scarcity. That's the rarity to find a pristine ten Dustin Martin base card. So. But this won't work with every other player in the AFL because why get a, a base card from their rookie year when you can get a rookie parallel? For example, with Dangerfield, why would you try and get... I don't think he has a base card in, in his rookie year, but just say you did. Why would you get that for $1 when you can just pay 15 or 20 and then get the rookie 
parallel, which is a better card. So that's, yeah, like I said, that's situation number one, uh, which is only Dusty at the moment. Situation number two, which is a lot more common, especially with older players, is players that don't have designated rookie cards from Select. Now, draft pick signatures, they only started in, what, 1998 or 99 or whatever. So they're, they're a reasonably new thing in the AFL world. We've got so many classic players from the 90s, 80s, and, and well before that, who didn't have cards created for uh, kind of hype collecting. They had base cards from people for people who just really liked the player and who liked the game and liked, liked collecting it, and they were produced in mass. I think a really good example of this is, is 90 Select. So you've got players like uh, Buckley, Rashudo, Hurd. They've all got base cards during that during those years, which are their rookie card. The problem is they're printed to about fifty to one hundred thousand copies of each. So stand alone, they're not rare enough to be worth anything. But put them in a pristine ten holder, and then I think you get a bit of value. Now it's not going to be hundreds or thousands of dollars, but it's definitely something that will be collectible into the future as the level of pristine condition cards from that era goes down. And this also filters into the 2000s. Now it's a lot more rare for a top echelon player to not have a rookie card in, in these times. But Gary Ablett, because he was father's son, he wasn't a, a high draft pick because of that, he fell through the cracks and this is his only rookie card. So uh, not only do I think he fits the bill as a superstar of the game without a designated rookie card? And you can say that about Ablett, you can say that about Jonathan Brown, you can say that about, yeah, Buckley, Hurd, Rashudo, pretty much any Hall of Famer, I think this has the possibility of working on, but Ablett especially, because not only is he considered the greatest modern player of the last 20 years, but this card is infinitely more rare than the 90s base cards of those other players I've mentioned. So this card, although it's not super rare, I would never say it's, it's you've got to get your hands on it now, otherwise you won't see it again. You'll definitely see it again. But the issue is getting getting one in perfect condition in, in 18 years after the fact will actually become quite difficult, especially as the years go on. So going into my back to my purchase, probably got a bit off topic, but going back into my purchase, I bought 18 of these in, in a lot of 3,000 cards. Luckily, I took a bit of a gamble because I didn't know what kind of condition they'd be in, but luckily they came in in pretty much all really good condition. Not perfect, but really good. The thing I'm a bit worried about uh, grading-wise with this card is that they're very off-center, and they're kind of all like this, so hopefully they're a bit um, generous with the grading because you can see these lines and the space on either side doesn't exactly match up. You can see it a lot more on the back as well where this area here is much wider than here. But then again, it has to be wider to fit this in. But just on eye appeal, it makes it look like it's non-centered. So hopefully they know the card and they know that this is how it's supposed to come. Lots of cards in that set is actually quite um, non-centered. So that that's, must be a bit of a, a flaw in the release of that year. But other than that, the card stock is unbelievable. It's really, really strong. And uh, just a feel of them is, is yeah, quite... I compared it touch-wise to the 2010 Prestige with comparing it to some base cards I got when I bought the Dusties. And the quality was actually much higher in these ones as well. And I think that's going to translate into more 10s for me, hopefully. But to just touch on again why I think this card rises above the rest is number one... He's an absolute superstar of the game. No one can say otherwise. He's probably the number one player of the last 20 years. Number two, this is his rookie card. There's, there's nothing else except for the Scandalous Retro. If you want to say that's a rookie card, you could say that. But personally, I think Select is kind of the AFL producer and the AFL set. So I'd say this is his 100% rookie card. And number three, even though there's 8,000 copies produced, Finding one in 2021, 18 years later, in perfect condition will, will be hard. I think it's, it's hard, and finding one at, at all is quite hard. They're on eBay for about $20 to $30. I got these luckily at about $8 a piece, um, so I'm, I'm very happy with that. But I think if you look into other hobbies, you look into basketball, and you, you look into baseball or soccer or whatever, 
and you realize sometimes it doesn't matter about how many cards there are printed. It matters about the importance of the card, the importance of the player, um, and yeah, whether it is their true rookie card, which in this case, I think it is. But I'll, uh, I'll see how it goes. Um, I'll probably do another financial breakdown after the fact. I'm not in any rush to send it in. I know CGA is pretty backlogged anyway, so to be completely honest, I probably won't have it back by February next year or something, and, and that's kind of the timeline I'm, I'm working on. But thanks for watching, and uh, I'm going to be making uh, other videos very soon. So, cheers. And I forgot to mention this in my first cut, but I think it's just too cool not to mention, and that's the fact that the Gary Ablett card is number 123, in the 2003 set. Um, and if you look at the basketball hobby, there's a very famous card, number 123 in the 2003 set, which is the LeBron James base rookie. So I think that's a really cool uh, coincidence, or maybe someone at Select was a really big basketball fan and knew that that's kind of uh, what LeBron's card number was gonna be, and they did the same thing for Ablett thinking he was going to be a superstar as well but it's a crazy coincidence and and just as a final comparison why i think that the ablet has potential is if you look have a look at this these numbers right here i've taken this from a uh, baseball card investor uh collector dealer uh same dude i mentioned last video but this is his breakdown of the how many lebron base rookies there are graded number uh, graded pristine tens from that year the price they go for and the overall market cap of those cards. So it's just something to think about. Look how big those numbers are and look how many there are. And then just think about there's 8,000 of these Gary Ablett rookie cards. How many of them would be a 10 at the moment? I'd say it'd be lucky to be 1,000 um, at an absolute max. So it'd be 2,000, I think. And that's still less than this LeBron and Le the LeBron's going for 16 grand. And I'm not sitting here saying, that the ablet should be 16 grand but i think it could for sure be a hundred dollars now i think it could for sure be a couple hundred dollars in five years and in 10 20 years who knows so i just wanted to add that to the end of the video see you guys soon